so you mentioned uh your goals for the session are mainly positioning and figuring out what i need to work on most i feel like i've hit a plateau recently and i don't know what to focus on because i already have a decent understanding of most mechanics and concepts and you are and you are on ps5 right yep uh is there anything i should be aware of switching there is still aim to, with controller it is still like it's yeah. not like you don't need to not aim with controller so uh, your stats are pretty good i mean you look like a really good player i've seen your clips before and you play on PS5 with like PC aim assist, so you're big, and you're already outperforming people that you know play on PC anyway. So you're just, so you're already like a high like tier player. Um, basically, what I'm gonna do with you is we're gonna is I'm gonna just look at your uh, gameplay here. I already took a glance over it, but um, we're gonna try and we're basically going to sit here and establish a game plan for you um, to like get better, you know. Um, because like I while I can't sit here and like watch your vods and things like that, we're gonna like structure like a plan for you to get better. So plateaus aren't okay. This this might sound rude. Plateaus aren't real. Plateaus are just caused by you contextualizing what you're doing. So for example, if your goal is, if you're like oh I'm gonna work on my aim for example, or I'm gonna work on like my movement or whatever, but then you keep working on your movement and keep focusing on the same thing as all like the entire time, you're probably going to like, you're going to hit a certain point where your improvement of such mechanic and such things you're focusing on are a lot more like you're gonna get smaller returns like once you learn how to super glide and once you learn how to like lurch with it or whatever like once you learn how to like do things with it it's like oh then you kind of start to learn less and less and it's more like mastering it just through sheer like re like repetition that's basically what causes a plateau uh you the best way to get to get out of a plateau is to identify something that else that you need to work on and to kind of bring it all together get like a separate set of eyes on what you're doing and things like that try different things do, di do different things and you're a bloodhound man i can tell obviously as well um the roller bloodhound, the scariest thing known. Man. Kinda oh, lucky they got a minute out of that. Super nice. Um, okay. So you have a 2v3. You're, you're, you're at a disadvantageous position. We can probably get a lot of value out of this. You're like, you're like you have no resources. You have no medkits, no ammo. I want to see how you play this. You took the G7 scout. That's certainly a play. I mean, I guess for like ammo efficiency, it's. I just have never seen people pick up a G7 scout in a pub match in forever. You guys are holding the zone on them. This is really good. This is really smart. You guys are holding the zone against them. They have to walk into you. You're probably gonna win off of this. Just because I know your mechanical level. If, the, if, if, if this was like the average like console player, I'd probably say that. Okay. A little fortunate that, that they came from that side. Top dog here, perfect. I don't know why you couldn't climb. Scan, scan. You swing this guy to help your Loba. Super good here. Back to the rock. Yep. I'll pop the cell and then fight. Unfortunate. Yeah, that's just unfortunate. Yeah, okay. This is unfortunate because you didn't have like any. You didn't have like any resources to expend. The only thing I would have done is like scan earlier here. Like you played this super well. Maybe I think actually you overswung here. You, you like I know you want to help your teammate and whatnot, but you you absolutely overswung here. I wouldn't have like you don't want to try and just ego chat people. Even like it is a pub, yeah. But like wait, like like if this is duos, I would like it would probably be fine. But like you're not like I don't think you're used to the situations where you're outnumbered, where you're where you don't where like they have a better advantage than you. Like even if you kill this person. But you both trade like like you do like two hundred and knock them, but they do a hundred to you. The enemy team has like they have like like what you both have red armor, so you we both have like what two. They ha you you guys have like four fifty health, but they have like six seventy five health. So if you so if you so if you do like two hundred damage and knock one, but they do like one fifty to you, the amount of value that they've gained is is overall more than the value that that you've traded, especially because you don't have batteries. You can't afford to take this damage. Like you need to like 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 to help your teammate here, and ultimately to like win this, you have to just take less damage and play and like run. Like I would run back here, and and, and like win your one v one by a wider by a wider margin. Winning like one v like winning fights by wider margins is what makes you be able to kill more people and like fight and like fight off third parties. I know that I, like I know this is obviously like, the last squad, but like e like e like anytime you get third partied and you die to a third party, it's either because you want to fight by like the world's smallest margin you know or because 
uh, you didn't actually, um, or because you didn't actually, like, analyze, like, if it was a good fight to take. And it's pubs, so the second thing isn't really super relevant. It is, it is in some areas. Like, earlier, you didn't push up because the other team was pushing you. But, like, here, it's, it's, like, it might seem like such a minor thing, but it's so important to take as little damage as you can by utilizing cover and effective strafes and things like that. To, because that lets you, that lets you win 1v3s, 1v2s in situations where you're just outnumbered without a lot of resources. Like... Like imagine if that second pump didn't hit you. Like imagine, like imagine if that if, if that guy only got to see like half your body and hit you for like forty instead of this like what like ninety like yeah that was a ninety nine pump. And then now you start playing the cover once you're you know because you're healing you get one cell off your gun doesn't come out which is like unfortunate. It's just it's such it's so 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 important in fights like this is a really good fight. This is a super good fight to analyze here. Because be, because you're at such a disadvantage and they really like your like your flaws like show a lot more. And like as a really talented player, you have to challenge yourself a lot more and go against like if you can't go against people of, of equal skill, you have to go against you have to set your, you have to set yourself up to basically handicap yourself, you know? You have to give the opponent like like an advantage, you know? Like mm -hmm. like like, if someone is, like, really good at, like, Super Smash Brothers, you know, and it's like, let's 1v1, it's like, no, I don't want to 1v1 you, you're going to shit on me. Okay, well, but like, a 2v1, you know, and it's like, oh, well, maybe that'll be more fair, because, you know, there's, like, several reasons. You want to do, and you, 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 you want to, um, you want to try and give your opponents as many advantages as possible in a way that isn't, you know, like, dumb. You don't want to just be like, oh, they're, on a, they're a triple sniper high ground. Let me just walk out in the open field. It's like, you know, like... Like I've like there hasn't been a fight where I've been able to analyze where you've take how much damage you've taken and like decision making like this other than this one and that one kill against the rampart in the earlier in the in, in the vod you know like 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 this vod isn't bad it's like it, but it's just a game where the margins between you and your opponents is so high it's only that once your opponent DCs that you actually like kind of or like once your teammate DCs that you actually have such a big disadvantage here and like this and like imagine you play every game like this. You know, like this situation, like this fight, you didn't win. Imagine how many more fights you won't win because of things, because of small things. Like, oh, you didn't know where all the where all the enemies were. You didn't really provide information to your team here. Like, 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 like you know where they're coming that way. The Bloodhound scans you. You don't scan back. For every, almost, not, not, not every time, but almost every time that you get scanned by a Bloodhound, you want to scan back. You want to counter scan. Because if one team has wall hacks on the other, well, who has the advantage, you know? You want to try and minimize that, that, that advantage by any means possible. So you want, so every time that Bloodhound scans, you want to scan as well. Every time that, like, you're in, like, that either, like you're in a serial, you want a Bloodhound ult. So you can trade that information back and forth with each other. Because if you don't know where they are, but they know where you are, they can set up plays and work on different angles and things like that against you. You want to scan here so you know where they are. Your Loba doesn't get caught off guard here. Like, like Loba knows she's, they're, they're over there, but they don't know how close they are. And then, and then the opponent's right there. Like, imagine you scan right here, and then now can actually break down, like, like, like this fight way better. They don't, they don't just instantly know where you both are. You can trade that information and under, and like play the situation more better, like more gooder. And every period of downtime where you're not actively shooting somebody, and you have your scan, and it's like a good time to scan, you want to scan. Like right here. You're not like right like right here i would argue that like scanning is like good but you can also argue that it's not so because you know you're watching this angle you're watching like the climb up whatever but as soon as but as soon as your attention gets redirected over here you want to provide information or you want to counter scan when, when the bloodhound scans like either like either of these two points is when your scan should come out any one of these three points is when your scan should come out It's, it's unfortunate, but the biggest thing for you is that you basically need to establish a plan of how you're going to become a high-level player in Apex. Essentially, um, the biggest thing about when you're plateauing is that you've sat a level, uh, you've sat a level of comfortability 
where you kind of just walk around and like kill people and just kind of like play the game but you're not like actively like putting yourself in new situations situations where you're unfamiliar where you're not necessarily scared but there's uncertainty there's like anxiety in the situations like i'm sure like i'm sure there was some there, there was some anxiety to clutch here you know not necessarily like i'm scared but like you know oh shit yeah. this is a really stressful situation if you the best way to clutch these situations and not become overwhelmed is um what's the term um it's the term where like when like you're scared of something so they oh it's called exposure therapy you know like 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 it, like if the stress like scares you become exposed to the stress more often the biggest thing that i did when i was like kind of at this like middle level of like being mechanically good but not necessarily like like the like a top level player i wouldn't say i'm a top level player now but, to, but compared to what i was before i'm like leagues better is i literally went into no fill duos every day and played no fill duos or or i played duos with a friend and just absolutely turbo aped everything to actually challenge myself and get like good opportunities so what i want you to do in like the future is um i want you to actually take time to have like a certain period of time i would say like like probably a time period between like three and four hours every day where you ch where you actively try and take on things that are too difficult for you maybe for like the first hour of apex you hop on and play like no fill trios like by yourself you know yeah and then from no fill trios you go ahead and uh, if it's too difficult for you which is which is completely fine but the way that the human brain works is that you actively want to throw yourself with things that are way too challenging for your brain because frustration is what makes the brain try and like your brain is obviously going to try and overcome frustration and figure out how to solve things like that you know like like it, like if don't feel is beating your ass you're gonna and then you and then you shift into something a little bit easier those like your brain is going to try and like take the information that it's absorbed in the ways it should have played the situation in no field trios and bring it into no field duos and you'll probably perform insanely well like as like as somebody that would that would like drop like 17 kill games in no field duos pretty regularly going into no field trios it's like like give yourself the initial really big hump of a challenge at the very beginning of your play session and then after at the very end you want to try and gradually like give yourself like a lower like less difficult thing for you to actively like like work on like what would you say are like the biggest things you struggle with as, like as, like as a player like like what do you think separates you like if i were to say like oh you versus like imperial how like what makes like what is this difference you know like like what is the difference between you and other good controller players probably just knowing when to engage and disengage if a lot of times I, I'll, I'll play really safe and then other times i'll like ego chill everything okay um it's hard to like, differentiate when to do what okay um so let's go ahead actually let's go ahead and do this let's go ahead and break down this this last fight again this last fight is a great example of how to un of how to un how to identify things that may be in your favor so we'll go ahead and list the advantages here this is how i've developed my game sense a lot as, as a player uh so we'll go ahead and list some advantages and disadvantages. Do you have anything in mind that you want to like say first for disadvantages? It can be anything. Um, obviously we're down a player. Okay, so we'll go so two v three. Okay, anything else? Resources probably because they just wiped the team. They have all that loot. Okay, so we'll actually we'll, we'll type loot, and then we can break this down. Also, do you have, you have no nades? You have no nades. No batteries. Okay. What are some what are some advantages you have? Do you have any uh, do you have any in mind that you can think of? Holding the height. Okay, so we'll say high ground. Anything else? Uh I don't know. Uh, the zone is also a super important aspect of, of, of like, the situation. You could have, uh... <clears throat> excuse me. Um... I think one of the other disadvantages you have is that you didn't anticipate the enemy's plan. Like, obviously... Yeah. And... How do you spell anticipate? A anticipate? Is this right? 
Let's try anticipate. I don't know. I don't know. I still anticipate. Would ring count in the circumstance? Or no, since ring hasn't closed yet. The ring is actively closing. This adds stress to your opponents. You want to pressure your opponents to do the to do bad things because they're under like a lot of stress. Like you know, like if you're like if you're playing fuse and you're throwing like a bunch of local clusters, bunch of nades at them, and the zone's closing, the amount of stress that they have is insane compared to you. And that and that makes people buckle on like like, like under pressure. Anticipate. I'm right. Okay, good. Um. So comparing all these advantages to disadvantages. Like, you obviously are in the worst situation here. Even though that you have these two things to work off of, it's definitely not enough compared to 2v3, your loot, you know. Like, the, like these things are not equal. So you're at a disadvantage in this fight. The, ba the way do you uh, know how to overcome a fight that, a fight that, is, this, that is disadvantageous? Tragic. In game i probably i don't know how to put it into words um do you have any like vague like thoughts like how to do it you know because you, you you can give like an example or whatever or whatnot you know um but the best way in my mind to overcome a heavily disadvantageous position or a disadvantageous fight you have to do two things you have to punish people's mistakes which is, for example, one person overextends. They're like, if you're like ranked or whatever, like you're in a tournament setting, you're in a very professional setting. You are going to, oh, one person swinging by themselves. All three of us swing that person immediately. Then boom. Even if they have purple armor, three people are going to kill that one person, you know? Yeah. You punish mistakes or you take risks. I don't know if you've ever heard the situation where it's like, oh shit, we're like dead, and someone's just like, I'm gonna try something. Have you ever heard that before? Mm -hmm. I, I think the best example is, um, have you played Have you played Overwatch at all? Are you familiar with Overwatch in any way? Um, yeah, a little bit. A little bit. Okay. Uh, so you so you know how Nano Blade is, is a really uh, powerful combo, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and basically, unless you have like a defensive ult against it, your team is just kind of like fucked unless they fuck up. But the way that you counter it as another DPS player, as another like person that can't individually do much about it, if you, if the if one team generates, we'll say like if one team if the, if like this team generates three kills, but your actually we'll do like enemy. If an enemy team generates three kills with it, but you generate four kills with it or by doing like a risky play but you but you get value off of it you know you've equaled the playing field now or well yes 3v4 would not equal it but you know you but you, you get the concept you basically have to take a really risky play and understand why it's risky and understand the value they can generate from it you want to try and out generate the the opponent's value um zach mazer is actually you know zach mazer right the mazer moments he plays for c9 you know you know that guy I love him or hate him. You, you can think he's dumb. You can think he's smart. Um, we have... There is this thing that I do, especially that, that I've learned from him. Where it's like, follow me like an idiot. Because if, because if you're in a building with like... And, and, and like, you're like down here, right? And there are like four... And, and like, oh shit, we're getting... Like a team's pushing us. Oh my god, there's a third party. Oh my god, there's a fourth party. Like, there's no sense in trying to be like, all right, let me figure out where everybody is. We'll make a plan. Like, there's no way. There's too much information to actually process. It, like, literally in your brain. Your brain cannot micromanage and process 12 enemies, knocks, guns, positions, things like that. So the biggest... Oops. Oh my god, I just deleted every... Okay, no, I didn't. Okay, there we go. The biggest thing you can do is just is just take a risky play and try and generate value with it to get your team alive and, and like out and like to safety you know mm -hmm. um and, and that's the big even if it's like objectively a bad play but you you have to do something you know you can't just not do something you're gonna die like it like if you're like again we'll use the building situation if you're in a building You'll see this a lot. You'll see pro players dismantle this a lot. But if you're in a building and you have like caustic traps, right? 
you have like caustic traps and you're all fenced and you're all like gassed up and fenced up and blah 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 you know like whatever but then like there's a team on the outside and they're like hey die you know the team on the inside typically dies right Mo like 90% of the time the team even though they have like gas and everything up they're gonna die typically right yeah that's that's because they're not making any plays they're not doing anything you have to actually like counteract with the opponents you can't let the opponents be the ones to set the plays and especially in apex the team that gets the first like advantage is typically the one that wins unless some crazy comeback or unless they counteract with their own risk you know like if they like let's say like outside team knocks one person on inside but then but then one one person from outside is like oh we knocked one goes in balcony then like walks in gets double swung by the two people now it's equal again but if this team is just sitting here trying to play and trying to stall for time out like you're going to do nothing you can't let this team like actively just kind of like set up and walk to you and set up like their own plan you have to try and, again like you have to try and, no, no don't do that you have to try and counteract what the opponents are doing with your own game plan like your own game plan here is to kind of like your, your game plan is loose it's kind of just like let's just like sit here and like camp them out you have to more anticipate what they're going to do like directly um another good example is if a team is um sitting like like let's say like it's end zone situation can i change this color to like yeah so let's say it's like end zone situation right like the orange is the ring like everything out here doesn't matter it's in the ring whatever but then the ring ends like in the center here right if they're like if you're a team playing down here and then there's a team up here with caustic like what like like what is this team's win condition if they have caustic like what is their win condition oh yeah that's caustic. yeah caustic ult. Their, their their win condition is just all right zone's closed let me just shit everywhere let me just literally throw my ult and then everybody dies very easily so you have to stop and prevent these like teams from from acting out out their game plan and it can't be vague you can't just say don't let the caustic goal because it's like okay how well what, what like what am i gonna do you know like mm -hmm. what am i gonna do against the costicle you have to try and formulate spe like specific precise plans to uh, like counteract the enemy's plans especially this is especially especially important in game zones i want to see you try and play or i want to see you play an end game at some point it can be like pr it can be like not a full game it can just be like the end of like a game it can be like the end of a vod or whatever like, it doesn't matter but i, I want to see you try and play an end zone the way like formulating a like formulating a plan specifically like oh okay this team understanding hey i have zero batteries i have zero grenades the only way we shield in this team is by knocking one like we have to knock one and then we have to like capitalize on it so you have to sit here and like play this ledge you have to play a little bit more aggressively to try and to, like to try and like out like punish your opponents a lot more even if you get punished for it you're gonna die like anyway like i like as good as a player you are unless you pull out some crazy fucking insane shit and just 1v3 out of your mind it's a, like it's a, it's difficult to win like your aim isn't objectively bad here like you overswing this one thing and it gets you killed because because it's like because because your mistakes are just, getting more, are just gonna get more punished like your aim isn't like bad here like yeah you missed one shot but i'm not gonna sit here and tell you you know just hit that shot what are you doing just hit that shot you know like that's the most deconstructive thing you could say you know if like better understand hey the last time we saw this team was they, they were in turbine you don't like they're not going to be over here you know like you spend too much time looking over here for information they're still is this a care package or is this a zone oh uh, that's, that's a zone that's a zone okay but like the last time you were fighting these guys was here and like in turbine and they, they were playing Rampart, so you know they didn't move. You know this team didn't, didn't just go like, let's Octane Pad like over here, you know? Like, and if there was a fight over here, you would see some remnants of the fight, you know? Like, you would mm -hmm. see, like, a death box over here. You spend too much time, like, worrying that they could be over here, when it's, like, not super likely that they would even be over here. It's just one team. You're not going to catch, like, multiple teams. Like, it's, like, it's, like, it's coming from, like, a position of game sense from knowing where they last were. Like, if a team, like, if you're the team in Turbine, and, like, even if you fought, like, over here, are you really going to walk out this way and then go this way? Like, no, right? Yeah, no. You would, like, you would use the cover here. Like, no, like, even if you're the worst player in the world, the worst player in the world wouldn't just be like, yo, let's walk out here, you know? 
like like the worst player in the world would come would be like all right walk over here i guess it's kind of like just the natural flow of like the poi like they would come out these doors here you know it's understanding where the enemies are and their most likely game plan like like i don't think you were actively thinking about what they were going to do i think in the situation you were thinking oh they're over here somewhere that's understanding like where were they last at like where like what is their most likely position like it's very like i would say there's like a five percent chance that they're over here but i would say that there's like a 95 percent. oh i guess i would say like 90 percent chance that they're over here and then some other like five percent weirdo bullshit that they're like all the way over here or something but like <sighs> with the way zone is they're not just gonna walk out this way they're not gonna walk out this way they're gonna just come at the zone like this and like you're like the value you get from the high ground is kind of like removed you can't really shoot them as they're walking up because like your angle that you have here you like you're not looking you're not looking you're not looking they're right here look <laughs> you're like too tunnel vision on this you know yeah but look at them look how long they walk out for and then you see them like like imagine if they crossed like they like i'm not saying you have to instantly see everything on your screen but imagine if you were anticipating like actually scanning like the whole peripheral area of your screen and like you like you saw them here and then maybe you can one clip one you're not even playing like the best height possible you know like yeah. you, like you should be playing up here instead instead of like right here on the sledge you know mm -hmm. and then and because of that you're cut off from seeing them here as well the biggest thing like again, your mechanics are fine. You as a player are fucking amazing. You're really good at the game. But I think the biggest thing is you need, you need to identify your opponent's exact or like general game plan. It doesn't be exact like, oh, my the Loba is going to come this way and then this person is going to come this way. This person going to come this way. You can be like, oh, they're probably going to like, you know, walk this way. And then we can like shoot them and do whatever. You, like, you have to counter your, like, identify your, like identify the enemy's plan and identify how you're going to intercept that plan, you know? Identify mm -hmm. yeah. the advantages that they have, identify the advantages you have, and identify how you're going to counteract their advantages or remove their advantages entirely. Like, like if a team has high ground, you can just like Horizon Q on them and get rid of their high ground or a Horizon Ultimate high ground. Boom, the advantage is gone. You've created a resource to get, to get rid of one of their advantages, you know? But you, you don't have resources to expend here, so you have to preemptively be ready to counteract their advantages here. But... I, like... If you want to do another VOD review, which, I, I mean, I mean, it's cool. Uh, I want to see you play, like, ranked, or I want to see you play no-fill. I want to see, see you play no-fill trios, maybe no-fill duos. No-fill duos might be a little bit more difficult, but I think no-fill trios would be really, like, there's so much to worry about and so much to focus on that um, that we could probably extract a, a lot of value out of it. And I would also like to see you play, like, a late-game zone, especially with how, like, unfocused you are. Like, I don't think you're used to being put under, like, this level of, like, stress in, like, a pub. Like, in Ranked, obviously, you sit there and go, oh, we're playing Ranked. I have to, like, focus on things, you know? But, like, in a pub, you're yeah. not necessarily, like, super used to that. You're kind of just going on autopilot. The biggest thing about plateaus and the thing that you're suffering with with plateaus is running off of autopilot. Because you have to actively think and challenge yourself to new experiences. Like, what like what have you been working on the previous, like, like year? Like, I don't know how long, how, like, how long have you been playing? Uh, I've been playing s for a while since like season three, but I didn't start really focusing on improvement until like season nine, I think. Okay, so that's like a that's over a year, yeah. That's that's definitely over a year of improvement. What have you, um, like what have you been doing to like improve? And I and, and I don't mean that like derogatory. Like I'm genuinely like you know like genuinely asking. I want to see what you've been doing. Um, just playing a lot. I don't know. I used to really try to sit and like analyze pro players playing mm -hmm. but after a while it was kind of just the same thing and i was like i don't know what i'm supposed to be taking away from this that's completely understandable it's it's not necessarily for everybody um there's definitely um do you do you watch do you watch a lot of like coaching and stuff like that or no there's not really uh, gonna be able to do coaching but... yeah i try to find who i can who uh uploads vods and stuff of them coaching um, a lot of it is always like newer players or focused like... yeah. yeah um one of th don't get me wrong you can still learn a lot from like a fundamental level like um mm -hmm. there's like especially if you're self-taught in a lot of things there's going to be like gaps uh, a drawing tool 
There's gonna be like, gaps in understanding, you know? Cause like, I mean, I saw, I saw Asu ask, wait, Watson Gen eats Horizonal? And I'm like, dude, there's no way. <laughs> like when you're self-taught, there's gonna be gaps in your understanding. So it is still important to cover fundamentals and basics. Um, but there is definitely like, um, do you know Coach Nahil at all? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I've watched his stuff before. He's really good for basics, and he also has really good uh, stuff for higher level players as well. Uh, it is kind of old, like season three level, but there's still like the game hasn't changed fundamentally a lot. Like obviously the resources have changed and like the characters have changed, but you can still understand like the basics of like how it works and things like that. You can just look up his channel. They're like, I mean, you you've already watched him before, but uh, videos like um, where is it? Where is it? Like end game, uh. End game tips, or like early and blind pushes in predator games. Like this, like these videos are super, super good for learning, like high, like improving upon high level, like pred, like like what pred players do and things like that. Um, and like there's like you know like what weapons to use, or like you know how like how to use your weapons. I mean, I've only I only saw you use R three one, but you played like the medium range most of the time and got close range when like the opportunity provided to it. Um, it's just. You can definitely become like a super high level player and i'm really glad that you don't use console as a reason to like excuse yourself from being getting better i've had a lot of people say that hey i'm on console i can't be a good player and i'm like there's nothing to do with that you can be the best player ever on console like you like like like, like how many console convertees come to pc and are insane even if they don't even play on controller anymore like uh there's like there's several people that don't play on controller anymore came from console i mean like i mean like look at like verholst you know, like he was a console, yeah. like like he was part of like the console gang, into PC and is now on TSM. Like there's nothing like you know, you can still do everything you can do, on um, like on console on PC. Obviously the opponents are different. Duplex skittle cakes, Verholst, yeah, exactly. Um, I just want to see you like if you can't fight people that are of equal skill or higher skill. Like when's the last time you fought somebody that was like higher skill than you? you remember? Every once in a while, I get someone in my pub games, but usually it's like I have a I have an RE forty five, and they have a yeah, exactly. It's so DK insanely hard to get like consistent like practice, you know. Like on um, equal ground, I don't think not for a, a while. I haven't fought anyone. Yeah, exactly. That that's where the difficulty comes in. I'd recommend you try if you can't play if you don't want to play ranked, which is understandable. I don't really want to play ranked all the time either. But if you don't want to play ranked. Uh, I recommend you either, either play against people like I don't know if I don't know how available tourneys are really right now, um, but like things like tournaments or ranked and things like that can pull you against people of of equal or higher skill level, and, those, and that's a really great way to learn if you look at it and analyze it. Uh, and also, if you do something like that, you can also record it, and you know we'll schedule another VOD review, and I can break down what they do right versus what you do wrong things like that. But it's hard to point out what you do wrong when your opponents make more mistakes than you. The margin for error for you is insanely low. So you have to either play against people that are harder than you, or you have to um, get, get to play against people that are that are better than you, or give your opponents a handicap in some way. And the handicap can come from you know, no no fill or like doing challenges or things like that. But I only think doing challenges is effective. Um, it's up to you. I think that's everything I really wanted to talk about. I've given you a plan, like I've given you a plan for what to do. Uh, what do you think you're gonna do next? Um, uh, to improve. Probably practicing no filling. Okay. Do that for a while. That's fair. And and you don't have to do it alone. You can do like no fill trios, like a friend or whatever. Yeah. You don't, you don't have to like. Don't get me wrong. Don't overcommit yourself to only playing no fill for the next two months of your life. You're gonna be miserable. You're gonna want to die. This game, like, <laughs> it's so frustrating to be like, I'm no fill trios. I'm a solo bloodhound, and then have a team just triple send you on an octane jump pad and you're like all right that's cool like you know like try especially with no fill get prepare yourself in advance to be in the mentality of hey i it's a, it's i'm gonna go next i'm gonna play next it's it's just one game we're gonna go next and if you and like you can uh did you do you record these with like the active record feature or did you like uh get like a replay feature or whatever i don't know what playstation has yeah, it's you like, just press a button and you can like grab thirty minutes in the past or whatever. Oh, 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 that's perfect. Yeah, uh, you can just get like a no fill game, where you like um, 
get like like some decent kills or you just have a fight where like i literally have no idea what i could have done better or like you just kind of like die instantly that isn't like just three stacks full sending you or something like that um 